Hi, this is a, uh, a rolling, narrated rolling session with a student from our combatives class called Mohammed. He's uh, towards the end of the co combatives curriculum, so he nearly, he's nearly a blue belt. So I start in the, with him in my guard. I spin, start trying to spin for the triple threat position. And uh, I'm just uh, getting his hand ready just trying to get his hand to lift up so I can jump my leg over his head for the arm lock. There we go. It's a great little attack, so you can see his arm was extended pretty much already as I jumped. Yeah, it's kind of having the leg on the shoulder just gives it a shorter journey to the other side of the head. Less time for him to react. So we're uh, starting, restarting again now with him back in my guard. Should have switched around really. Um, next time we'll do that, I think. So I like to have my hand in the collar. It gives me the opportunity to do the sweeps and also um, you can attack with that triple threat. Mm, I need to get good at doing it the other side though. I've definitely got a huge um, preference to having my right hand in the collar. So I was originally just now looking to sweep him to my left. Um, and I tried tipping him over then with like a pendulum style sweep, hoping his hand, his his right hand would go out for base and I'd better shoot my uh, left knee through for the triangle setup, but uh, it didn't work. I probably didn't bump him quite enough. And um, I also wanted to sweep him to my left still, but there's you can see there's two other people rolling quite near to us, so I don't have that option. Um, I managed to jump to the triple threat position here again. But he does a good job this time stacking me. He stacks me right up, which breaks my legs open and forces me to push him away, uh, which breaks the triple threat. But now I've got no one to my left. I really get in position for the sweep. So you can see my shin is across his stomach and I'm all ready. I'm just waiting for him to move. I've, at the moment, he's sat back quite heavy on, on his heels and I'm um, just waiting for him to lift up or tip to the side or something, then I'll sweep him. So there we go, that's him lifting and then we go and take the sweep. Now, uh, we're in the mount, um, so I've got a cross collar choke. I could probably finish this here with the cross collar choke, but I, just, I wanted the arm bar. So you can see me trying to get him to raise his uh, right arm up so I could get my knee right past it up near his head and trap his elbow so he couldn't get back to the floor, um, but I didn't manage it. So I'm just kind of looking to see, see what he's doing now, trying to get a reaction out of him by pushing here and pulling pulling the arms and pushing the elbows to see what happens. He does a great little uh, bump and shrimp his uh, knee in here. Look, so he bumps, creates the room, shrimps his knee in. This is really good and we teach this in uh, BBS1. So avoid to avoid getting the guard, I jump over for the side mount. Really good, Mohammed. Uh, he tries putting his hand across my face there, you see, so I uh, grab the Americana. As soon as I felt his hand trying to come across my face, I realised he could be set up for that. So look, I bring my hand around his head and I, I hover it over. Yes, as soon as he jumps around the front of my face, I'm ready. We call that the rat trap from BBS1. Okay, so I'm in the side mount. I have his right arm trapped for the underhook. So I'm using my left arm to trap on my head to trap his, trap his arm so he can't come back across my neck. And I'm looking to do attack for the knee split attack here. He knows this attack, I think, so he's, he's not making it easy. Um, he's grabbing my wrist here, which is great defense. You know, really kind of shuts down what I can do. And um, as he follows my wrist, as I'm moving it, I think I was, my mindset was switching to an arm bar, but that kind of made, yeah, made me sloppy on that underhook control, and he gets his arm out, so I decided to switch back to the mount. Again, I'm trying to uh, get his elbows to lift up with the threat of the collar choke. See me sliding my right hand in. I have a huge preference to having my right hand in the collar. I need to work on getting comfortable with the other hand in. <clears throat> and I'm uh, basically struggling to get this, uh, this armbar set up to work. It's a very similar kind of setup to the one I did when I was had him in my guard. Um, you're using the cross-collar choke to threaten um, 
threaten him so his hands come up for defence and then you move to an angle and try and take the armbar. Okay, so I'm kind of like just play just seeing what I can get here, just like pushing my knees up under his armpits, seeing if I can get a hand to come out, and then I'll look for a triangle for the mount. But he doesn't, he keeps his hands right in the middle, really good and really defensive. Yeah. Very very good mount defence. Now he rolls me off here, but unfortunately my leg was already high enough up near his head that I could just jump straight to the triangle setup as soon as I landed. And uh, I can feel he's tired now, so it wasn't too hard to get his elbow across. And now I just start turning for the triangle, I can feel it's pretty tight. His other hand's almost in the mix as well, there you go, it's just popped out and then I lock the triangle up and yeah. Uh, it's time for him to have a go now, so I let him have the top position. He grabs a headlock. And I was going to do the uh, combatives headlock skates number one, but I wanted him to have some time on top, so he mounts. Good, he inserts his hook and smashes me with a bit of hip pressure, that's really good. And this is a classic combatives uh, mount submission, the Americana arm lock neck hug variation. Great for the street because you don't give up your position if it goes wrong, you're still in the mount. Whereas if you're spinning for arm bars, of course, if it goes wrong, you could end up with a bad guy on top of you. Um, I'm not going to let him have it that easy though, so I block his arm. When he gets into the Master Saga, he'll learn how to do like an attack chain from there, so he can carry on attacking. Uh, yeah, he kind of trying to uh, maybe do an Ezekiel choke. I'm not sure. I, ha I certainly haven't shown him this choke, so. Um, but his base isn't good, and he didn't have his back hook in, so, you know, he's at big risk of getting rolled. I can feel that his heart is almost jumping out of his chest now. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking to swim my hands on the inside and get my hands on his bicep. Especially my left hand here, that's what I want. As soon as I get that, I'm going to stand up and bring my knee in the mix. But before I even get to do that, he kind of brings his knees in to try and control the distance. You don't have to obviously do that when there's no striking. That's more kind of... Uh, Veltudo style technique when you're at risk of getting punched in the face. Now I'm looking at uh, put it. I want to put my leg in between his legs so I can either cut through for a for a knee split pass or I also wanted him. I also wanted the foot lock here, and um, I wanted the diving toe hold. So you can see me reaching for his toes. What I want to do is keep my foot in the middle, grab that outer toe so I could dive over the top, but. Unfortunately, the opportunity didn't arise and I couldn't set it up. Nice roll, Mohammed. Uh, well done.